This is the story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world, whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. Want to make a fortune? Sure. Why not? You may be just the guy. All you have to do is find a certain method. Its first letter is G. No. No, not gold. Not gold, uranium, or any of those. The stuff I'm talking about is still known to only a few. Want to try for that fortune? Find G. Ken Yeager's an interesting guy. He's a scientist, one of the new kind. You won't find him in a long white smock behind a laboratory table. Every time I've seen him, he's been wearing dungarees, work shoes, and a flat mackinac over a sweatshirt. You're liable to find him anywhere, even in a coal yard. Hey, Steele! Hi, Ken. What you up to? Be right down. What you doing up on top of that coal pile? Uh -huh. Huh? What'd you say? Right down, I said. And you pipe down now, huh? Huh? You want to get the watchman on us? Nobody is supposed to be in here. Well, you told me to meet you here. I didn't know they'd post a watchman. Well, of course they have one. This yard's private property. Come on, before we get caught. Come on. Well, sure, sure. Come on, before he sees us getting out. Faster, faster, before he catches me with this. What the devil are you doing in here stealing a bag of coal? Okay, now. Watchman has turned his back. <laughs> that, that hole. Run. <laughs> Where are we going now? Keep walking. Now listen, you. First the coal yard. Later. There's a guard down here, too. You tell me to meet you at the coal yard. You steal a paper bag of coal. Now sneak down here along the pier. Just this pier. You know which pier this is? I can read city garbage disposal. Garbage and ash. So what? The dump. City dump. Where the street cleaning trucks unload what I want. You nuts. What I want. Ken, you sure you'll feel all right? Fine. You've, uh, you've been hitting it pretty hard all these years. Those experiments of yours. Huh? Well, people sometimes do overextend themselves, you know. Steel. Huh? Steel? Sure, I see it. The ash cow? This one. Right next to us? See what it says? City powerhouse ash disposal. Powerhouse ash disposal. So what? What I've been looking for... Ken, give it. No. Now look, Ken. You're going to start that again? Look. I know you a long time. Will you come off of it? Will you cut that big brother step? I'm on the trail of something big. Real big. Biggest thing I ever stumbled on. What? G. Huh? G is going to revolutionize everything. Just like that, huh? Just G. <laughs> Germanium. Never heard of it, huh? No. Metal. A new metal. You kidding? Uh uh. You're sure, huh? What's the matter? Don't you think I know my science? Sure, but when I maybe blew my gasket? Well, the way you've been acting. Germanium, you're a mechanical you're... element. Same natural family as tin and lead. Symbol GE. Atomic weight 72.6. Atomic number 32. Grayish white metal. Very rare. Found so far mainly in smokestacks and ash pits. Oh. Satisfied? Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Of course. I, I didn't know. Neither does anybody else. Yet. Huh? I don't know where to find germanium. But it will help me get on board this ash stop. Sure. I get a chance to switch another sample of these ashes. Another sample? Of course. I've been doing this for weeks. Anybody watching? Uh -uh. No sign of the watchman. Uh, well, let me do this bag. Whoa. I've been going from one coal yard to another for weeks. And every ash dump in town step on it. Let's see a mile away up on top of those gray ash. It's almost full. The lights are behind you, remember. The harbor lights. Okay. Now, come on. Give me a hand down. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Now. Uh, John, if I'm right... If I'm finally on the right track... Well, come on, let's get out of here. Uh -huh. This bag of ashes and that bag of coal, millions. If I'm right, John, worth more than gold. Come on home. I went home with Ken. Passed the watchman when their backs were turned. Went all the way across town to the little building where Ken had his research laboratory. He had no real home. 
An army cot in the corner made Ken's lab his home. Oh, mash it. Huh? Mash me that pebble mill. Press that gas valve wider. Huh? Gas, wouldn't you? Sure. All right, slide the button. Hey, London. Slide. Monsenberg. Hungry? Uh-huh. Tired? How long are you going to be? Mm. These experiments take long? Mm. Find a chair. <laughs> Where? Over there. The only thing that could be comfortable in here is a test tube. Okay. When are you going to let up enough to enjoy life? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, you are. I'm huh? enjoying it. Fine. But, but what's that? What'd you find, Ken? Crack open that gas more. Fire flame? Sure. Oxidize, oxidize. Come on, oxidize. You getting something out of that mess? I'm getting point one, point two, point twenty-five, twenty-five hundred. Uh-huh. One percent. Not much, is it? Uh, I'm no chemist, but that doesn't sound like a big percentage. Steel. Yeah. Over there, table. Huh? Checkbook. In the drawer. My desk. My pen. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Car. Where's your car? I'm on one now. All right, go down the street. Here. Blank check? Buy one. Just like that. What time is it? 645. Close. Haber and have a close. The big chemical company. Where am I going to get some? I used mine all up. What? Gee, germanium. Need some pure, purified steak. How am I going to have a control for the compound? Wait till tomorrow. Gotta leave tonight. You should buy the car. Tell you what. Here. You know these. How do hearing people wear? Uh, hearing aids? Yeah, get one. Well, your hearing gone bad? New kind. The very newest here, tubeless. Ones without tubes. No vacuum tubes. And stop at the drugstore. Run me a couple of bottles of acid. What kind? Nitric hydrochloric drugstore. Call that, uh, muriatic. Where are we going? Same place this fight two minutes came from. Chucky. The bluegrass, huh? No. The hills of Kentucky. <laughs> beginning of danger and a peace of the unknown. There's much of these when in a moment we hear more in the story of John Steele, adventurer. I bought the station wagon, the acids, and the hearing aid. Then I drove the new car back to Ken's lab. He was waiting for me at the curb, sitting on top of a sidewalk full of laboratory equipment. I helped him stow his cases of chemical gear in the back of the station wagon. Then we started off, south to the hills of Kentucky. Come on, John, give her the ink. Driving as fast as I can. We've got to go 900 miles. The man said don't go over 35. How are we going to get there? The auto salesman said 35. Come on. Huh? Pull over. Come on. You want to ruin the car? Look, just get out. Let me drive. Come around, huh? Okay, okay. Ruin it. Your money. Ruin your new car. <laughs> ruin you know you're supposed to break it in. Ruin. Ah. Tell them I'm ruin before you even buy them. I only spent 3100 of your bucks for it an hour ago. Come on, come on, go around, get in. Uh, ruin, what's 3100 compared to a million? Yeah, if you make a million. Make it. All I gotta do is find it. Come on, close up. Let's get rolling. <laughs> Ken drove. He drove as fast as the car let him, hour after hour, toward northeastern Kentucky. I must have fallen asleep. I woke up with mountains in my eyes, then I couldn't believe what I saw. A sign on a mountain said, Tennessee. Sixteen hours he'd driven straight down, 900 miles in 16 hours. Blue boy, blue. Uh-huh. You know him? What? You snore. Yeah, I know something else. Like a whole grunt full of pigs. Uh, you better stop and relax. Lacey, I'll stop it, Lacey. Where's that? Chuck. Okay. Uh, let me drive, huh? Nope. Oh. In the blue hills of the high Kentucky, on the trail of the lonesome mine. Mine, mine. Ah, <laughs> see, you know, mine. 
Sure. Yours. Uh-huh. Germanium. All mine. I must have fallen asleep again. When I opened my eyes this time, nothing was moving. The station wagon had stopped. I looked for Ken. He wasn't in the driver's seat. And I looked through the dusty windshield. Ken was down on his hands and knees up ahead in the ruts of the road. He had his arms full of coal, stray hunks of coal that were lying around. Steel. Yeah, Ken. I two minutes. I think it's the same kind. I'm on the right track. All right, you drive, huh? I want to look over this coal. I drove. I wanted to see what he was doing in back of the station wagon. But in this part of Kentucky, you've got to keep your eyes on the road. We were climbing higher, the hill country, the wild, lonely hill country where tourists never come. Then we started down. I heard Ken cracking coal in the back of the wagon. Then we came to what should have been a town built on the side of a mountain, 35 degrees straight down the side. When I slammed on the brakes, part of the mountain started sliding down under the car. I threw the gear shift into reverse, yanked the emergency. Then I started to get out to find a rock to put under a wheel. I had to hold on. It was almost too steep to stand. There were no rocks. Coal. The mountain was coal. Then I knew what looked so funny about the town. The houses, church, jails, stores, everything in the town had slipped foundations. The whole town had slid down the mountain. Half of the buildings had ended up a thousand feet down. Ended up upside down. Anybody here? You feel it shake? The ground? Undercut. All these years, too much undercutting. You mean underneath, too much coal mining? Skin, broke the skin. Here, dig your shoe. Yeah, yeah, I see. Skin, that's what we call the ground. <laughs> too much digging underground, too much blasting. Uh-huh. When you blast, you've got to space your blow shots in time. Give the ground a chance to recover. Uh-huh. Well, where is everybody? This place is like a graveyard. Yeah, yeah, like a graveyard after a storm. Topsy turvy Everything's tumbled down. Hey, 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 you. Hey, you. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Hey, duck. Duck, Ken, the shot. Well, that's better. Duck, you darn fool, down behind the car. Lousy shot. Well, that shows somebody's around. Yeah, yeah, sure does. You see him? Keep down. Shots came from down there. Yeah, I down. You want to get your head shot off? Unfriendly. Yeah. Real unfriendly. Shots came from the bottom of the mountain. Oh, how am I ever going to get my work done? They're not unfriendly once I get to know you. How are we going to arrange that? Hands up. Oh, uh, what? I'm behind you. Get, get into that car. Now, listen. Get, get it where you get yourself killed. My trigger fingers are all nervous. Well, why don't we just turn around for a sec? Want to talk? What first? You got us all wrong. No, oh, you're acting smart. Get. I got no use for the lights here. Now, we're not red on those. What are you doing around here? You, mister. Oh, hey. Look out for that rifle. You. No. Now look, turn the other way, huh? What you doing around here? I'm taking coal samples. What fur? Maybe make some work around here. Coal's all played out. Coal's only bring us folk trouble. Well, I'm not really after coal. You said you was looking for coal samples, now you're saying they're... Well, not really the coal, coal itself. What I'm after is in the coal. I have to experiment. He talking nonsense, Git. No, no, you've got to listen. Coal's ruined us. Why don't you listen? You gonna get... Ken. These are poor people. You got any cash on you? That's an idea. Uh, what is your name, mister? Yancey, Jess Yancey. Uh, well, here, Yancey. Just to show, you, you know, prove we're not here to skin you. Come on, Yancey. It's yours. Take it. I ain't done nothing to earn your money, mister. Well, take the money. Spread it around. Sure. Must have a lot of little Yanceys. Buy yourself some vittles. Man's got no right to take money unless he earns it. Okay, earn it. Round me up some men to help me, huh? Cold your coals all played out. You can't open these mines and expect tonnage. Just, uh, just coal samples. Right, Ken? I have samples. As many different samples as you can find, Yancey. That's all I want. Now, you're going to help me with my experiment? Yes, sir, man. I'm watching you. How am I going to explain to him, Steele? It's tough. Mm, suspicious. The darn suspicious. Hill people always are. They saw me looking at the coal. All they know is coal's coal. Heard what he said. I know, I know. Coal ruined them. But they won't understand what I'm after. Won't even know what I'm talking about if I tell them germanium in the coal. Took me a little while. Tell you they won't understand. Uh -huh. How are they going to understand if even most people on the outside don't know about it? We! Uh, what? Byron! Byron! Easy. Byron! Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Mountain boys all around. Come oh, over here! Hiding behind rocks with rifles covering us all the while. Come on, boys! Still pointing those rifles. I don't like this, Steel. 
How am I going to explain what I'm out here for? They wouldn't understand chemistry, chemical engineering. They're people, Ken. One thing people all over understand, a smile. Into all those guns? Smile. Smile, Ken, smile. <laughs> Suspense and action. One leads to the other. And the result we'll hear in a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. We smiled. Ken and I smiled as the lean and hungry looking mountain men came down at us. Came down the mountain from all sides. They came slow with the funny, loping walk of the mountains, with their long guns at their sides aimed from the hip. I held my breath as they ringed us in. They rolled their eyes over us, Ken and me. Then they looked over at the brand new car. Then they looked in at the mysterious looking chemical gear piled inside. Mysterious to them. <laughs> Samples, that's your act? Samples and a place to set up my labor, my testing stuff. You going to coyote? Huh? No, no. Uh, coyote means blast. Use dynamite to blast. You sure? <laughs> Cross my heart. You don't have to do that. Just don't coyote and we'll be glad to work for you. Work? Get me samples. Different samples. Mister, if you're honest, you won't have no trouble here on the mountain. We've been hoping, we've been praying to the Lord to send us down something more solid than a shifting mountain. We got little ones and old folks and poor women. Ain't had nothing to cook for vittles. Now, Mr. Deal, we're willing to work and provide. Ah. Uh, it's no use. Thought you were making progress. This isn't the coal. You came here. You're not the coal. Germanium content, Nix. Not a trace. Why'd you come here? I'm sure I'm right. I don't understand. The coal I found G in back home. Yeah? The coal uh-huh. I took from that yard. Uh-huh. That coal came from here. You sure? Of course I'm sure. I checked the port shipping record. Checked where every big coal shipment came from. Well, they're bringing you different samples. Yeah, and those ashes. The city powerhouse ashes. They've been burning this local coal all year, too. Well, how come? They haven't mined coal commercially around here for quite some time. Old coal, mined years ago, shipped out and stockpiled. Oh, before the mountain came sliding down. Samples, samples just don't jibe. But I'm sure the coal I tested back home came from here. Come on, where are we going? Mine. There must be a deep mine somewhere around. Wait, wait. That's where that coal I tested back home must have come from. They won't like it. i got to find that coal, that surface coal, kind of picking up, bringing in. Tell you, they don't want us monkeying around down underground. I want that particular coal. Let go, will you? Now, stay if you want. I'll go along. He went. I couldn't stop him. I knew Ken. Knew him from way back. Nothing could stop him once he got an idea into his mind. He stepped out through the crazy angled doorway of the tilted old store building and out into the tilted streets. He put his hands in his pockets and tried to act casual. Then he dug his heels in and started to slip slide down the mountain. It was impossible to walk, not at an angle of 35 degrees. I saw his head and shoulders dip down, out of sight. Then I looked around, out of the broken window of the store. From all sides, the mountain men rose up. They dropped the hunks of coal they'd been picking up for us. They picked up their guns and started stepping and sliding down after Ken. I ran. Ken kept yelling and I ran, down the crazy, tilting mountain. Then I lost my balance and I started to slide. reach out, hold, grab, but nothing was solid. Everything was going down under me, along with me. I was going round and round, over and over, rolling, rolling slow like a heavy stone, like the rocks, like the hunks of coal I saw coming up at me, out of what was left of the thin dirt skin of the mountain, coming up slow at me at my clothes as I kept rolling down toward the bottom of the mountain. Then I saw Ken. 
I saw him sliding, sliding slow like in a dream, and I saw the mountain men sliding too, shooting, snap shooting at Ken below them, shooting every time they got the chance. Then the mountain stopped sliding. I felt the ground shudder and shake, and it made my head spin and my eyes go out of focus and my stomach go sick. I had to bend over, close my eyes. Everything was spinning. My head. My ears were aching. The sickness was coming and going. I pushed at my ears to stop them drumming, but I couldn't clear my ears. I opened my eyes and I saw Ken. The mountain men were standing all around him, holding their guns on him, but they looked sick too. They were pushing at their ears too with their free hands. I saw their mouths move, but I couldn't hear a thing. Death. I was deaf. The slide had made me deaf. I saw Ken yell back at them, yell right at the muzzles of their guns. But I could see from their faces they didn't hear either. I saw something else. I saw them lifting their guns. They were ready to kill. I yelled. I yelled loud as I could. I could feel my throat burn with the force of my shout. I still didn't hear a thing. I ran. Ran down best I could. I couldn't hear the sound of my footsteps on the dirt. The rocks and the pure coal jutting up through what was left of the bottom. I still couldn't hear a thing. I pushed past the guns and ran down to Ken. I ran into him. I was off balance. I grabbed onto him. He yelled at me, but I still didn't hear. Then I felt something in his pocket. The hearing aid. The one he'd asked me to buy back home. He looked at me. Then he grabbed it out and waved it at Yancey. He beckoned to Yancey, then put it up to Yancey's ear. Why? Well, I'll be danged. Lee, Tidy, Baz, come over here. Listen. Listen to it. Put down the guns. I'll be doggone. Here you plain as day. It's no trick. That's why I'm here. D- d- here, here, Paddy. Huh? Huh? It come ridiculous. See? No trick. That's why I'm here. Inside, here, look. Oh, 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 don't, don't. No, oh, no, no trick. Here. See? I'll open it up. The metal case. I'll be here. It's a machine. To help people hear. Hard of hearing people. We're only temporarily deaf from the mountain slide. We're starting to get our hearing back already, but this helps people who don't hear so well all the time. Clary, uh, Clary, she, she don't hear so good. Your wife? Clary, my, my old lady, Clary. Now, see? See this little piece of metal? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for. It's called germanium. Oh. Uh, skip the name, Ken. Anyway, this, this metal, you find it in coal. You do? I found it in coal that came from here years ago. Years ago. Coal right from here. It's worth something? Worth a lot to big companies, Jess. Uh, to, to make these little hearing things? Radios, TV. Huh? Electrical things. You heard of that? Electric, yeah, yeah. We was going to have it here someday uh, after the mines. Well, forget about the old mines, ancient history. The coal's no good for that. Not worth mining for that. Just so. Coal's been trouble. But it's good for this. That's why I went down the mountain looking. The coal is right under here. Going to be work again. Sure, Jess. The mountain slide exposed the old vein of coal Ken was looking for. That's what he means, Jess. Piney, Vance, Lee, run back. Get the women. Get the little children. Get the old folks. Run through the house and tell them. Tell them there's going to be work again and poke salt and poke salt and hog mollies and lots of vittles enough for everybody. And store clothes and school and sure it be work. And maybe even electric. There sure is, Jess. There sure is. <laughs> <laughs>